Good afternoon, Father Hoy. Good afternoon, Mary Ann. It's wonderful to have this conversation with you around what you've been thinking about these many years. Mm -hmm. And I thought we could start just with the connection between Jesus and the Spirit and why there is a Georgetown where this Jesuit tradition is alive. Well, let me, let me start this way, Mary Ann. Um, the last of the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola uh, would have the person making the spiritual exercises ask for the grace of an intimate knowledge of how God is at work in them. So it's a grace that enables the person to see, well, God has been at work in me all my life, and I may not have noticed how God is at work in me. And the, the way Ignatius would suggest that that advertence, uh, the person come to advertence of this, is to see how is God working in my thinking and in my choosing, or in my experiences and my understanding of those experiences, and the insights I come to from those experiences and understandings, and then what follows from that in my life. So Ignatius is saying it would be good to ask for that kind of insight because if you don't have that kind of an insight, you can go your whole life thinking that your own thinking and choosing is autonomous or that it's uh, solely yours or that it's not indebted to, to God. So we can live a life of ingratitude uh, for something that we should be noticing and be grateful for. Because with that intimate knowledge comes gratitude, and with the gratitude comes a reason for something like a, a Georgetown University, and why a Georgetown University is something that uh, the, the Jesuit order and, and the church uh, bothers to put in existence and keep in existence. Um, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be wonderful if, if a place like Georgetown could, um, not as a place, but within each of the intelligences operating at Georgetown, in each of the wills operating at Georgetown, and their very considerable intelligences and very strong wills, if there could be some kind of a, a, a noticing of the fact that the Spirit is assisting in these, or would assist in these if there aren't biases in the, the knowing and the, the choosing. Uh, that the Spirit is, like the brooder, is not other than, but uh, accompanying what Ignatius calls co-laboring. So the Spirit is co-laboring in the process of trying to come to know and choose. Uh, co-laboring in my heart and my mind. Even though I may experience myself as simply unassisted and unaccompanied by, by God's Spirit in the process of, of knowing and choosing. So it seems, seems to me that um, that there there could be one mass of ingratitude um, going on if this co-laboring God or the Spirit is never adverted to in the process of people coming to to know and to choose, both in general and at a place like Georgetown. And it would seem to me at a place like Georgetown that would be a failure uh, to connect to, uh, in the case of Ignatius of Loyola, the grace that uh, Ignatius recommends we ask for so we come to an intimate knowledge of God assisting us in our intentionality.
in our interiority, in the process of thinking and choosing. When you speak with faculty and you ask them, where is your understanding leading you? Where is your knowing about your discipline or research initiative taking you? And where is God in the midst of that? Or I don't even know if you asked that particular question, but I think in the midst of a place like this, people make quiet and unassuming epiphanies along the way. And, and they, they... That's right. It's, that, that's a good word, epiphany. There are voila moments, eureka moments, epiphanies, where I come from from not seeing and, all, and, and, and then coming to see. It's, it's culling that experience of an epiphany, an insight moment. It may be a little baby insight or it may be a, a maximal life-changing insight. It's the ability to see that moment, which you call an epiphany, to see that moment as accompanied by uh, the co-laboring uh, God that is at the core of this issue. That I'm not imposing a, um, an experience on people. I'm asking them to see where do their insights come from and do they experience those insights as totally aut autonomous. But your question is more interesting than that in some sense because I just came from a, another university which I'll leave unnamed which sees its whole reason for being as coming from serving the poor through the knowledge that has been come to or the knowledge arrived at. So the intrinsic character of the knowledge arrived at is, is not something connected to God unless the knowledge arrived at is serving the poor. So we spent, we spent a whole day talking about this. What is it that valorizes that particular university? And they would say what valorizes that particular uh, university is it serves, it intends to form students and faculty and people to serve the poor. Well, I think that's a wonderful thing, but what happened to the process of coming to know in the course of your valorizing the reason for universi your, your university as serving the poor. Anyway, that was, that was the issue. But it, it goes to your point of epiphany and whether or not we can experience something more than the autonomy of our own intentionality in the epiphanies we come to. And it's precisely that experience of an epiphany that sees there's something more operating in my intelligence and my choices than just me, that is at the core of this, if you will, this theology of cognition, uh, which is traced to the spirit working in intentionality. <laughs>